What's up and welcome to Love Inspiree space on the internet. For those who don't know, my name is Angie Roll. I'm the founder of Love Inspiree, where our mission is to build more powerful and transparent and durable relationships. Welcome to the Is It Love series, a six part series where we will be discussing domestic violence. Obviously it's October and it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month and part of our mission here is to build powerful, transparent and durable relationships, right? It's all about having healthy relationships. And in order to have healthy relationships, you need to know when it's not healthy. You need to know when it's toxic. You need to know when to get out. That's what we're here to do today in this six part series. Open the conversation, open the dialogue. I am not a domestic violence counselor, so I have utilized resources. I have spent time studying. I have spent time talking to people that unfortunately I know who have experienced domestic violence, gathering information and understanding so I can present this series in a respectful and honorable way and helping people become aware of the situation. Sometimes we don't know that we're in a situation and so bringing awareness to it helps people understand this is not going in the direction that it should go or this is not going to go how I think that it should go. It's not going to end up how I think it's going to end up. So many people are losing their lives due to physical violence. You know, in the last month or so, I have seen so many cases of people dying, of people trying to commit suicide, all of these things that people are suffering with in silence and some people not so much in silence. For episode one, I put together this presentation. I hope you stick around with me and we can talk about this together. I will leave some resources that I have used in this video in the description as well. Of course, I want to make sure that people understand that I am not a domestic violence counselor. I have researched this stuff. And so I have put my resources within the presentation as well as in the description. So let's talk love. Hey guys, and welcome to the Is It Love series, Understanding Domestic Violence, episode one. So this is where we are gonna start off and get educated on domestic violence. Um, as a, again, I am not a domestic violence counselor, so I want you to take this information and be directed to the right resource. This is just to bring awareness to um, what's happening with us or what's happening in, in, in somebody's relationship. So I wanna start off each episode with a get educated with a quick fact about domestic violence. So this one is coming from www.safehorizon.org under their statistics and facts section. And it says nearly half of all women and men in the United States will experience psychological aggression by an intimate partner in their lifetime and they got their information from the CDC in 2017. And so I think this is really important to um, touch on for the simple fact that a lot of people are experiencing this, whether it they tell you about it, um, whether they show it or not. Um, so it behooves us as individuals to check in with people, always ask how people are doing. Now you can't force people to tell you something. You can't force people to talk about something that they don't want to talk about, but you can make sure that you are being there, being present for them and just checking in with people. A lot of people are losing their life to uh, domestic violence. A lot of people are committing suicide. It's so many things happening. And so um, a lot more people are are experiencing this than what we think and the categories that we're getting ready to go into are just really something to, for us to think about and get educated on to make sure that we don't fall into these same patterns of domestic violence. So I want to start off with what domestic violence is, the technical definition of it. And this came from centerforfamilyjustice.org. I always want to make sure that I give credit to the people that I am giving, um, getting my information from. As I said before, I did a lot of research on this and I just wanted to, you know, share these resources, actual domestic violence pages for you as well so you can know who you need to seek help from. Again, I am just here to raise awareness to it. But domestic violence, I really love this definition of them all. Domestic violence is a pattern of coercive, controlling behavior that is pervasive life, threatening, crime affecting people in all our communities, regardless of gender, regardless of our age, our sexual orientation, our race, our ethnicity, ethnicity our religion, our social standing and immigration status. So this means just because you are a high class white woman does not mean you are not gonna be subject to abuse. 
just because you are um, a gang member doesn't mean you're not going to be subjected to abuse whatever the case may be there's no discrimination when it comes to domestic violence anybody can be a victim of domestic violence and i think that's something that we tend to um, forget about but we'll talk about that later in episode two or three i believe so anyway we're moving on to physical abuse breaking down these different abuses and physical abuse is any intentional act causing injury or trauma to another person by way of bodily conduct and i really wanted to harp on that word intentional right physical abuse is an intentional act um nobody just accidentally punches you in the face or slaps you in the face like they intentionally meant to cause you harm by hitting you by slapping you by mushing you by doing whatever it is that they were doing like i said because nobody really is is going to um you know accidentally go you go like this like that doesn't just happen and a lot of times you see this with people in physical people that are going through physical abuse where they'll get punched in the face and then the person will come back and say i'm sorry well it wasn't a mistake you intentionally did it you put some effort into that you know like i said you can't just oh i'm gonna accidentally hit you today no it doesn't happen that way but when I, I think of physical abuse, I want to talk about the causes of physical abuse, like situational factors, the roots, um, the real roots of people's problems. And a lot of physical abuse happens with people definitely not making excuses for abusers, but how you grew up, the way you grew up, where you grew up, all of that plays a factor. That's what you call a situational factor. All of that plays a factor, a role in how this person is going to treat their significant other right that's why it's so important like raising kids is one of the most important jobs people have to do um, is raise children in the right way and one of those things when you're dealing with situational factors and this is something that i practice and i teach and love inspire it's always understanding who you're dealing with always understanding um you know why you're dealing with this person where they come from just understanding them in general so you know their background so you know how they act how they how they move you know you know all of these things about this person and then there's sexual abuse which is unwanted sexual activity with perpetrators using force making threats or taking advantage of victims not able to give consent so this can happen in marriage too and this is obviously a christian page i um teach biblical things as well as pertaining to relationships and you know we often hear that the bible tells us to not withhold sex from our partner right unless we're fasting or something fasting in prayer or something but i think people also need to understand that christ also teaches us to love our partners so if we know our partner does not want, specifically want to do something or they're not into something we should not force them to do something because he taught us to love our partners um husbands love your wives as christ loved the church wives um you know be good to your husbands submit to your husbands all of that is love right and so if we know our partner is not feeling something we ought not to make them consent to us i think you know when people are using that phrase you also need to follow her up or that biblical verse you also need to follow up and understand that we are also um taught to love our significant other and that includes not making them do the things that they want to do so we have psychological abuse as well which is a form of abuse characterized by a person subjecting or exposing another person to behavior that may result in psychological trauma which includes anxiety chronic depression or post-traumatic ptsd post-traumatic stress disorder so this this can look like gaslighting this can look like paranoia trying to um someone trying to break you down right they're trying to get you um sucked in into believing that they are all you have like nobody else loves you you can't go anywhere else without me you know nobody is going to accept you they're trying to break you down to keep you in this remember the definition of domestic violence they're trying to keep you in this bubble of control they're trying to keep you in this bubble of manipulation for their own benefit it has nothing to do with you but for their own benefit and then we have verbal abuse which i think is often kind of put on the back burner because people don't really think of this as abuse like what we say to our partner i actually recently did a podcast on this the last podcast episode 39 where i talked about when we're yelling at our partner and we're saying mean things to them 
are we abusing them? Now, I know people might think we're, I'm crazy when I say that, but it's really something for you to think about. Anytime you say something nasty, that's verbal abuse, right? Verbal abuse is when someone repeatedly uses words to demean you, to frighten you, or control someone. If you get into an argument or you're trying to persuade your partner to do something that you want them to do and it ends up in a blowout fight, that's kind of a verbal abuse, right? And so I wanted to shed light on that so people can be aware of what it is that they are saying and how they are treating their partner, being intentional in their communication. Projection is a real, real thing, y'all. Projection is one of those things where, you know, and I often tell this story about my own self where I was, um, you know, I was told that I wouldn't be anything, that all I would be was a baby maker and I would never graduate college and this, that, and the third. And I was told all these things. And then I realized the person that was telling me this, they weren't, didn't really believe that about me. That was their projection on them own, on their own selves, right? I think about the incident, um, you know, there's a lot of backlash Khloe Kardashian is getting for correcting people about calling her daughter big instead of tall. Whereas most people use the phrase big as like, you're growing, you're developing, you're getting tall. Not that you're actually fat, because um, there's not a lot of two-year-olds that you could actually call fat. They just got a lot of meat on their bones and they'll slim out anyway. But that's her own projection because she has dealt with weight issues. And that's no shade to her because I'm all for empowering, especially little, little girls, empowering them to understand that you're not big, you're beautiful, you're this, you're that. But that's also a form of projection because she experienced something she doesn't want her child to experience. Even though it's a good thing, right? It's still projection. And this happens with verbal abuse. Um, they're demeaning you because maybe they were demeaned. Um, they are belittling you or trying to control you because maybe they lost control. Maybe they were sexually abused as a child. Then we have financial abuse, right? So financial abuse is known as the silent weapon. <laughs> um, it's used in toxic relationships to financially control their partner's access to economic resources. So basically they're withholding bank account information, they're keeping you from getting a job, things like that is financial abuse. And you know, for a lot of stay at home moms, stay at home moms, stay at home wives, this thing can work as long as you are a team, as long as you are talking about finances together, as long as your partner is not withholding things from you. So of course, if you're a stay at home wife, if you're a stay at home mom, always make sure you stay in a no and don't just become ditzy and just like oh whatever happens happens because that's how um control and manipulation can kind of creep in and sweep into the relationship so always know what's going on when it comes to finances and the last thing that i want to talk about is cultural abuse right so cultural abuse happens when abusers use aspects of a victim's particular cultural identity to inflict suffering or as a means of control so again this is a, a christian page um, where I talk about Christian things and I believe, you know, growing up, I've always believed this. Now I believe this, that the man is the household. However, he in the Bible is taught not to abuse his power. So you can have a man as a woman, you can have a man be in control of the household, be the leader of the household, but not abuse his power. And, you know, when you get down to manipulation and control, um, controlling your ideas, controlling your thoughts, that's abuse of power. That's abuse of your leadership. Um, every good leader knows how to use their Indians. Every good leader knows how to talk, how to delegate, how to, um, you know, communicate different things that need to be done. And if you have somebody that's in a leadership role, whether you run your house where the woman is leadership, whatever the case may be, I'm not, you know, judging how anybody runs their household, but if you are the leader of your household, make sure that you're not abusing the power. And if you see that the abuse is happening, that is um, domestic violence right there. That is anytime somebody is trying to control or manipulate you, that is a form of domestic violence. A special shout out to reachma.org. Um, it's called Reach Beyond Domestic Violence where I got the six different types of abuse from. Again, I'm not a domestic violence counselor, so I have um, relied on the resources um, from you know the research that I did and I want to give credit, make sure that I give credit 
to whom I am collecting my information from and sharing with everybody in hopes that we can raise some more awareness on domestic violence. So make sure you check them out. They have some good support on here, hotline, um, direct services, external resources, how you can get educated, get to know them. Also, most importantly, how you can get involved. So check them out. I really like, this is one of my favorite um, websites that I use to um, do a lot of research on and get some understanding from. So make sure you check them out. Again, you know, I just want to make sure people understand that domestic violence, we have to, a lot of us don't know that we're in it. And, and for us to know that we're in it, we have to get educated on it. And so that's what this series is about. So I hope you guys stick around and join in and, and learn something. And if you see something, say something, get some help for somebody, get some resources for them. Again, you can't force people to leave until they're ready to leave, but you can definitely be there as a friend. So guys, I'll see you all in episode two. Have a blessed, blessed day.